A bat-wielding parrot goes berserk on TikTok. Or is there more than meets the eye? Hi, I'm Tommy C, and this is Shot for the Point News. How many times do you hear this from news, guys? I'm going to show you a story that fits my personal narrative, and then I'm going to preach about what's important to me and my personal narrative. How many times have you heard that before? Never. You heard it now, because that's exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, I'll give you the news, and, and this is a small social media story uh, that, that I think you should know about, and then I'm going to talk about my bias <laughs> and, and my, um, actually, uh, how I feel about things about satire, outrage culture, and people taking things too seriously. So let's get into the meat of it first. Uh, this a Twitter user right here, blackout underscore, I think it's two underscores if I'm not mistaken, going by the name of uh, Dreytoven. Uh, he posted this, toxic parenting or nah? Here we go. Nothing. Your chores. What the crap? What the crap? You're going to buy yourself a new TV by doing chores. You're going to work it off. Where's your remotes? Put your remotes down here on the floor now. Where's the other one? I know you got another one. Where's that? Up there? That looks like a PS3. What are they still doing around? Now you're going to work off all your crap. The PS3 was probably his toy when he... <laughs> you're going to pay me to buy you new toys. You seem to think you get everything for free. That's not how it works. I'm not busting the PlayStation. I'm taking that with me. Yeah, I blame you. Good move. That's going to be mine now. You're buying new TV. I bought it right here. I've got nothing. Okay. Uh, this this is where it gets uh, kind of interesting, if you ask me. Uh, Keemstar, uh, of course, this I'm sure, although I, I haven't been able to verify it yet, this unknown man, um, I imagine, took a lot of heat on TikTok. And uh, he comes out and tries to explain the whole situation. All right, everyone, on those videos where we're smashing all the toys and electronics and stuff, it's not real. It was just a skidded act. We're throwing away toys that uh, are not usable. Those PlayStation remotes didn't even work. They won't charge. The TV I believe it with the PlayStation 3 because I'm having trouble uh, uh, charging my PlayStation 3 stuff. TV only sticks on one channel, so they want to get a new one. I'm getting them new stuff. The PlayStation the phones, the iPads, none of it was real. So, peace out. Hope you all treat your kids good because I am. Don't take them away from me. And they love <laughs> you very much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure somebody told them to say that, but I'm also sure uh, this is absolutely a work. Well, how do you know? Do you ever notice in a lot of these videos that somebody just happens to be there filming it and nobody seems to pay attention? Is this just like, you know, I remember reality t TV was new and I, I my first experience with it was a, a show called the real world that came out in 1990 30 years ago but reality tv really didn't take off if i remember until about 2000 that's when it became mainstream that's when the main networks at least in the united states uh were putting them on and mostly it was sort of a cable phenomenon prior to that and mostly on mtv and other channels that you were usually aimed at young people generation x and at the time they were young they were young at the time i swear to god um uh, and I just, I wonder sometimes, because I have this sort of, uh, I don't think it's even a debate, a discussion with uh, my partner, new partner here, John Scream. And uh, yeah, he posts videos. He posted a video the other day right here. And we talk about satire being dead. And the, the just, people just take things so literally. And how it can actually be damaging for a YouTuber to use satirical stuff. In this case, this guy's a TikToker. Uh, but this is, to me, this is, I guess, somebody that's familiar with McJugger Nuggets would think this is an absolute goof. I think the, the biggest thing to complain about here, it was probably not a good idea uh, to be swinging around an aluminum bat. Um, obviously, the kids are prepared to go in the corner. Uh, but that being said, uh, I mean, we're, we don't have any real danger here. And I want you to pay attention closely to the response uh, when he, when, when Keem exposes this, here's the person that posted this blackout underscore or Dreytoven. Regardless, they posted it like it was real. And there are parents out there that are doing things like this. So the question is still valid. 
Um, yeah, sounds like a party. Uh, <laughs> it'd be fun to, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and this also sounds like um, when somebody makes a false or ridiculous allegation or jumps the gun, uh, when you see something like um, a, a actual assault of some of some sort, and we find out that allegation is is false, and the person who made the allegation or maybe somebody who jumped on that bandwagon says, "Well, it's it, maybe it didn't happen this time, but I'm okay with it because it happens in other places." No, 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 no. It don't work that way. You don't get to ruin this guy. Uh, ruin this guy's life and have his kids taken away because they're playing some stupid stunt on on uh, on TikTok. I'm sorry. Do you, let, let, let's be perfectly honest with you. Outrage. People are just ready to be outraged on the internet now more than ever, especially with current conditions all over the world. People love outrage. Outrage sells. Outrage gets you clout. Grandstanding, if you can pull it off without looking stupid, is actually worth a hell of a lot of money even as a private citizen. And I think this goes in and it, it, it destroys satire. I mean, this channel used to be a, a satirical channel, and I'm not saying this is the reason it failed, um, but we used to cover YouTube drama news in, in a way that a um, sort of a, like, I, I guess a, a mainstream, uh, we had people with suits and they were reporting on YouTube drama like it was serious news. Uh, the news is all real, but the characters were. And we used to have skits, too. And I, I was really proud of it. I really liked it. Get to the point. You can check on the front page and see if you like it. Uh, we still left the videos up. But I, I did wonder, you know, just after experience after experience, after the advent of reality TV becoming so mainstream, at, at the fact that, you know, outrage culture, it's, by the way, people have always looked to get outraged by the newspaper. This is nothing new. It's just so prevalent now with the way social media works. I, I, I really wonder if it killed one of my favorite things in English class, the satirical stuff. When we learn satire, you know, I, you know, now that I think about it, when I was in high school, we didn't cover satire very long. And I, I think I remember talking to somebody a couple of years ago, um, about 10 years younger than me, uh, you know, uh, a millennial, so to speak. And he said that they didn't really cover it until he got to college. So, and it's just, to me, it's just left people humorless. Um, and you know, for somebody who grew up with Andy Kaufman, who actually played jokes and pranks, uh, and, and, and then, and knowing I'm friendly with, with J station and the fact that, I mean, some of the ridiculous, outrageous and terrible things that he's done, but they were all fake. They were all satirical and you know how much he, like he wouldn't even lift the veil. He wouldn't say, yeah, yeah, it's satire. He wouldn't even do it. I actually heard him in the long run. Uh, he wouldn't say it because people want to believe every. It's, it's not like that old saying, like, don't believe everything you see on t TV. It's almost like people want to believe everything they see on TV and they get very, very upset when that veil is lifted. I got news for you that WWE stuff, it's worked. <laughs> yeah, just, no! I, you're almost destroying people. I mean, it. it I, I think it. Dare I say it hurts art? You think? Now I'm not trying to say this is high end satire here, but the fact that I mean this thing oh 4.3 million hits this thing was designed to get this guy's kids taken away. If you really think if Dre Tobin was trying to be a hero, that's what was going on here, and it stinks. It 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 stinks. It, it um. I don't know if this was a really good idea. I mean, but is it a bad idea because these kids were in any serious danger? Or was it a bad idea because there's people like Dre Tovin out looking to exploit it? Ask yourself that question. And yeah, that's my narrative. I think it stinks that satire is dead. I'm sure John Scream or Phil Scream, excuse me, his brother. Uh, would um, would agree with that, and I think for people that read, you know, that look for reality in absolutely everything, uh, are are totally missing out on some really funny stuff. Again, I'm not saying this guy's. I think this guy's just playing a joke on social media. I think it's it's sort of like a dankular thing. You only expect a couple people to see it, and then of course, uh, uh, Dre Tovin sees it and sees an opportunity to uh, gain a couple subs.
And uh, no, uh, the, the question is not valid. The question is ridiculous. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're really a cloud chaser if you really think about it there. Thanks. Like, sub, and share. Peace.